All right, y'all, it's the end of the month, so it's time to take a look at how April went for me, financially speaking, AKA time for a budget review. To be completely honest, there were some financial wins this month, and there were some financial expenses that were unexpected and on the larger side. In fact, my whole bills and spending section of this budget is a little long, so we'll just jump right in to see how April went. If you are a regular here, thanks for coming back and see if you can spot something that's actually missing out of my bills and spending section this month. We'll talk about it at the end. And if you are new here, my name is Rebecca and I am on a journey to reach financial independence. So in order to do that, I have to track my finances from month to month and see how much I am able to save. Savings rate is huge in the financial independence community and we will discuss what my savings rate for April was towards the end of the video. Overall, I would say despite my expenses I had this month, April is a win. So starting at the top of my budget, I use Google Sheets to budget and I keep my income sources blacked out for privacy, but overall, April was a very good month for me. I had a three paycheck month this month, and I am actually filming this on the 29th, and allegedly, according to the IRS website, I should get that $1,200 stimulus direct deposited tomorrow, so I accounted for that in the budget, hoping it'll be there in the morning, and this is how April went with all of that factored in. I planned on bringing in about $7,370 this month. I actually brought in $8,172.65. Not bad at all. In fact, this is probably one of the highest income months for me ever. Now, 1,200 of that is stimulus, but still, and it's a three paycheck month for me. But still, I'm going to take it as a income win for the month for me. I usually do not have budget reviews that are this high as far as income goes. Moving on down into my bills and spending section of the budget. Regular bills are at the top. Firstly, we have my mortgage and my mortgage payment every month is $687. That includes PMI and escrowed taxes and insurance. Next is my power bill. I budgeted $160. We came in a little bit under at 156 and some change, that's good. Next is the water bill, budgeted 50 bucks for that. Came in a good bit under at $40.02. Hey there folks, Rebecca here at lunch at work. I was editing this video and realized that my lapel mic cut out for some reason. So there's a huge chunk in this video with no sound. So here I am on the lunch break and we're just going to continue the video from here. I will finish up the bills and spending section from work. So here we go. Next on the list was the internet bill. And last month was our first month. I knew the bill was gonna come in around $110. It came in at 110.68. So I think that's what it's going to be going forward. After that was gas for my car. I always budget $100 for that. Came in at about 90, so a little bit under there as well. After that was uh, the Thrive Market annual fee. That is a $59.95 fee that Thrive Market charges me once a year to use their services. But for me, I feel like it's worth it. That works out to about five bucks a month and I really love them if you're unfamiliar. They are a online grocery store and they also have home goods. Um, they deliver to your home and I feel like their prices are very reasonable. I have actually done a couple of videos about them in the past and for $5 a month, I feel like they are well worth it. I always have a referral link for them down below. If you use the link, then you get 25% off of your first order. And if you become a member, then they will give me $25 in Thrive Cash to spend on the website for the referral. Next, Amazon. So at the end of March, I had decided to make an Amazon order. So I budgeted ahead of time the $93.81 there for Amazon, but I ended up making a second order later on in the month. The biggest portion of this $381 charge is about $200 for a new blender. 
I love our Ninja Blender and it is not broken, but y'all know I use it for green smoothies about every day and it still works, but I really wanted the newer model with the larger smoothie cups. So I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet and just upgrade our blender to the newer one. Honestly, I can't remember what else it was that I had bought on Amazon. I'm sure it was just household stuff we needed. After that, LUS, that is a new hair care product line that I actually did a review on. If you wanna check out that video, they're specifically for curly hair and I have not used it today. I've decided that I do like the products and I'm going to keep buying them, but um, I still have some old products left over and I'm not just gonna throw them away. So I've stopped using the Lust products. I'm gonna get rid of what I already had and my hair is frizzing back out as a result, but that's okay until I get rid of what I had before and then I'll start back using the Lust, but good products are more expensive and I spent about $95 with them. After that, Robert De Niro. I have a Kia Niro, his name is Robert, and he needed an oil change, which I knew about ahead of time. My husband usually takes care of that for me, but he needed some more work. I knew the tires were getting close to um, needing replaced, and I decided to just go ahead and do that since this month was gonna be a higher income month for me with uh, having the three paychecks. So we did an oil change, four new tires for me and a new cabin air filter and all of that ended up being $519.48. But that was one of those larger expenses that I knew was going to come soon. I just didn't think I was going to do it in April. After that, about $40 at Walmart. I'm sure that was household stuff we needed. After that, donation. Um, a family from my hometown, their house burned down and they had a GoFundMe that I contributed a little bit to that. So $20 for a donation this month. After that, $59.96 to Bones Coffee. I was getting low on coffee and rather than buy the plain coffee beans that I usually get off Amazon, I decided to get my fancy Bones Coffee that I really enjoy. They have a lot of good flavors and so I got a few bags from them, spent about 60 bucks. After that, McDonald's. I had a weak moment, y'all. I spent $7.55 at McDonald's on April 17th and this was right before McDonald's announced that they were going to start giving away meals to healthcare workers. So, oh well, if I'd have just had some patience, I could have got McDonald's for free. After that, another Walmart trip, about $151 spent there. Again, I'm sure it's more household things that we needed throughout the month. After that, $210 at Chewy. Now, if you watched my May budget planning video, you know that I planned on making the Chewy order in May, but we got down to our last bag of dog food. And I know that anywhere you buy from online nowadays with delivery is running behind. So I decided to go ahead and get that Chewy order in. So that way I wouldn't have to worry about getting low or running out of dog food. So. I got a couple bags of dog food, some bully sticks, and another gallon jug of uh, dog shampoo since uh, Rollo, our Irish wolfhound, is large and we go through lots of products with him. Next, a car mount for about $34. So I do shoot uh, videos in my car every once in a while and I have a hands-free mount that I put my phone on, but I feel like it's a little bit shaky and I saw this really cool one advertised on Facebook. So I went ahead and spent the money and ordered that. Hopefully it will be a little bit more steady in the car when I film there. And lastly, Lowe's. So our dishwasher broke and we knew that this was going to be an expense that we had to handle eventually again. Didn't know that it was gonna pop up in April, but it did finally bite the bullet. Um, our dishwasher, sometimes it would make this grinding noise and sometimes it wouldn't. And sometimes it would leak out the front and sometimes it wouldn't. But as long as it kept getting our dishes clean, we just kept using it. And it finally died last weekend. So had to go to Lowe's and get it replaced, but really enjoying the new one. It is nice and it's quiet and it's fast, so. Yeah, we're, we're liking that purchase. But again, that was a big sum of money that we did not plan for ahead of time. Spent $568.82 at Lowe's. Hubs is gonna pay me back for half of that for the dishwasher. And very last listed here, the MacBook. I still have not purchased the MacBook, y'all. 
and I may do it in, in May, but I may not. So I'm still a little bit torn about that. Um, work is starting to pick up a little bit. So I'm not as worried about my hours getting cut now, but even still, it's just a lot of money and I don't know. I'm still a little bit torn on which one I want. I think that I will eventually make this purchase. I just don't know exactly when y'all. So in total for the month, I spent about $3,230. It's that time where we check in with my debt-free color charts. I'm down to my last two debts, a car loan and some student loans. We will start first with my car loan. I made my usual $386 payment in April and at the start of the month, my car loan balance was $17,929.29. It is now $17,628.57. That means $300.72 went towards the principal and $85.28 was lost to interest. Let's see if we can color in a line. $17,600 is where we are at. 17, oh very close. Oh, I'm so close. <laughs> I'm at 17,628. So I missed coloring in this line by $7. Womp womp. How disappointing. Oh well. <laughs> Next we'll look at the student loans. I made my minimum payment towards earnest for my student loans. My interest rate's really low right now. I have a variable interest rate, but it's only 2.81% at the moment. And my payment in April was $489.76. At the start of the month, my student loan balance was $23,176.95. It is now $22,753.71. So, out of that payment, $423.24 went to principal and $66.52 went towards interest. So let's see if we can get a line there. We're at $22,750. Yes, we can. We can get one line, excellent. If you are interested in refinancing your student loans, if they do not qualify for the 0% interest right now, like mine did not because they were private, now would be a really good time to consider refinancing while interest rates are super low. I do have a referral link for Ernest down in the description box below. I will take a look at my paper chain here. Every link in this chain represents $500. So when I started the month of April, my total debt balance left was at $41,106.24. It is now all the way down to $40,382.28. So let's see all the links that we can rip off of this chain. We're at $40,380. So we can definitely take this one. And this one, 40,500. And y'all, next month, this one will be gone. We will officially be in the 30s. That's amazing to me because when I started this journey, I owed about $90,000 worth of consumer debt. That did not include my mortgage. So to be in the 30s, to be almost two thirds of the way done with my debt payoff journey is freaking exciting. All right, my mic was still not working for my favorite section of the budget, the fire and investing portion of my budget. So here we go with that one. First line item listed is my regular taxable account with M1 Finance. I put $25 into this account every Monday four Mondays in April means that I put in $100 to that account. I also have my Roth IRA with M1 Finance. I love them. Again, referral link below if you are interested in getting started with them. I planned on putting $750 towards my Roth this month and I did do that. So that brings my total contributions for my 2020 Roth up to $1,000 and I already maxed it out for 2019. Yay for that. 
Next is the real winner for the month, y'all. I had planned on putting about 550 in my Betterment savings account. This account I'm trying to get up to $10,000. It's going to serve as just backup funds and my emergency fund as well. Um, yeah, I budgeted to put in 550 and y'all can see, since I did not make that MacBook purchase, all of my extra money in April went towards this account. And I put $3,113.16 in my high yield savings account with Betterment. This account already had about $2,250 in it, so we made some good progress in this account this month. Next is a small savings account that I have with a local credit union. It usually earns me a couple pennies interest every month. This month it only earned me one cent of interest, but that's okay. It's likely because they cut their interest rate along with all of the other high yield savings accounts out there. So it is what it is. One cent of interest earned there. Lastly, my retirement account at work, my 403B. This is another real win in my opinion for the month of April. I recently upped my contributions in my retirement accounts. I doubled them. When the market started going down, I decided that with a 7.7% base rate of pay increase that I got recently, it was time to put that towards retirement instead of just having a little extra money every month. So I upped my contributions from 7% to 15% and that's a lot more money than what I was putting towards retirement every month. So I thought that my portion of the contributions to my 403B would come in around $1,200 for April. Actually, I contributed about $1,500 in the month of April, which is pretty awesome in my book. And as far as the match goes from my employer, I thought that their contributions would be about $300, but it was a little bit over $400. So that's great, guys. That's nearly $2,000 just solely to my 403B retirement account, not even counting my savings account, my M1 accounts that I have that I contribute to on my own. I'm really happy with that. In total, for my investing and savings accounts for April, I had budgeted that I thought I would save or invest about $2,900 for April. And in total, I put in about $5,880. That's freaking awesome. I love that. Now, if I had bought that MacBook, it wouldn't have been as high, so... We'll see what happens next month, but for April, 5,880 bucks saved or invested, that is great. So my final balance at the end of the month, I had budgeted that I was going to spend, I'm getting jabbed by a wolfhound. If you're noticing the curtains moving and me getting jabbed, that is Rollo, sorry y'all. Anyway, totals for the month, I had budgeted to spend about $7,200 and I actually spent about $8,000 but the budget balanced overall, I have exactly $100 left that is going to roll over into May that will cover my taxable contributions for the month of May. And overall, my savings rate this month was awesome. I very nearly made it to a 60% savings rate for April. Super happy about that, y'all. And my, am I financially independent yet? I am now back over 5% of the way to my financial independence number, which is $1.2 million invested. So to my regulars, did you notice what was missing out of my regular expenses in my bills and spending area? If you notice that my cell phone bill was not in there, good for you. What did I do? Y'all, I truthfully had gotten a little bit complacent about my cell phone bill. I had an unlimited plan with Straight Talk that was only about $60 a month. Y'all have seen this month over month over month over month in my previous budgets. And I never really questioned getting that bill down because I felt like it was reasonable for an unlimited plan. And it is, truly. But y'all, always when you're trying to reach financial independence, constantly be asking yourself if you can improve any area of any of your usual bills every month. And lo and behold, I did. Thanks to Mary over at Penny's Not Perfection. I will link to her channel in the description box below if you happen to have not heard of her. 
She recently did a video talking about Mint Mobile. And now that I have internet at my house, my phone is on my Wi-Fi at home. And when I'm at work, it's on the Wi-Fi at work. So I really do not use a lot of data anymore. I don't need an unlimited plan anymore. So I looked into Mint Mobile. Now I had some concerns that the coverage would not be very good. And for whatever reason, I had never really looked at the coverage map as compared to the coverage map listed for Straight Talk, the service that I was already using and happy with. But this time when I looked at Mint Mobile and saw their coverage map, I was like, you know what? Let me see if there's a coverage map for Straight Talk. Sure enough, there was. And it looked exactly the same, guys. So I decided to make the leap and switch to Mint Mobile. And y'all, I have been super happy with the switch. I can tell no difference. In fact, if anything, I think Mint Mobile may be just a little bit faster. And my guess would be that it's probably because there's not a lot of Mint Mobile users in my area. So I guess I have more bandwidth. But anyway, I'm super happy with Mint Mobile. And now I have eight gigabytes that I can use every month. And my cost for Mint Mobile is $260 a year instead of $60 every month. So at the end of March, after I'd already uploaded my budget video, I actually decided to make the leap and switch to Mint Mobile. So my total for 12 months of service was $261.81 for the entire year. That blows my mind, y'all. So yeah, you won't be seeing a cell phone bill for me every month now from now on. That works out to $21.82 every month for cell phone service, whereas before I was paying $60.11 every month. So I saved two thirds on my cell phone bill. I saved 63.7% on my cell phone bill every month, which sure, it's only about $40 a month, but that is $40 that I can put towards something else. And y'all, when I switched to Mint Mobile and was really happy with them, I tried to get my husband to switch too, but he was not interested. So they sent me this. This is a free seven day trial for Mint Mobile. There's a SIM card in here that you can use with your phone and see if you're happy with Mint Mobile service. Like I say, I tried to get my husband to switch. He wasn't super interested. And if one of y'all, this is not like an official giveaway from my channel. I only have one of these, but whoever is interested in this, I hate to just throw it away. If you'll email me your address at questifier at gmail.com, whoever sends it to me first, I will send this to you as long as you're you know, in the United States. I don't even know if Mint Mobile works outside of the US. But yeah, if you're in the United States and you would like a free trial of Mint Mobile, email me your address at questafire at gmail.com. Whoever gets to me first, I will send this to you. That way you can test it out for yourself and see if you like it. If you'd like to just dive right in and give them a shot like I did, I do have a referral link for them now in the description box below for all of my videos going forward. I have really been super happy with their service. It was easy to switch over from Straight Talk. I am not looking back at all and I am happy to have one less bill in my budget every single month. If you use the referral link for Mint Mobile in my description box below, they give me a certain amount of free service and whoever uses the referral link gets $15 off of their selected plan, whatever plan you choose to use with them. So that was one of my financial wins for the month. And I just say one of because there's another thing that I'm working on again, thanks to Mary at Penny's Not Perfection. She recently did a video about how they are refinancing their mortgage and it got me thinking because I had looked into it previously. If y'all have been following me, you know that I did look into it previously when the Fed initially cut rates and I couldn't find anything that really made sense for me to do locally. My mortgage is already very low at $687 every month, even with PMI factored in there. But 
Given that the Fed kept cutting rates and Mary uploading this video, it inspired me to look again. And I ended up going through Iberia Bank and I am currently in the process to refinance our mortgage here. Believe it or not, the $687 payment is with a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 4.25%. I am now going to refinance this mortgage down to a 3.25% interest rate, a whole percentage point saved. It should save me about $135 every month on my payments. Everything is in process now. I will give you more details as I know them but this is going to get rid of the PMI. So yeah, the mortgage payments should be going down for me too, eventually. That is more money saved, more money available to invest. And as far as the financial losses go for the month, um, I mean, technically these couldn't be avoided indefinitely, but they just weren't planned for ahead of time. The dishwasher breaking, which we knew it was on its last leg anyway, it was gonna happen eventually. My car, Robert De Niro, needing some work, and the Chewy order that I had planned on doing in May and ended up doing this month instead. All of that stuff that just creeps into the budget, it really does add up, y'all. Just those three expenses there added up to almost $1,300. So there goes that stimulus check and then some. So I call it a financial loss, but at least I won't have to worry about paying for all of that stuff in the future. It's already done and handled and over with. But still, that could have been $1,300 extra that I could have put in my savings account. I will. That should wrap it up for this video, y'all. I am sorry that these videos are so long, but this is my favorite video really to make every month because this shows the actual progress that I am making towards financial independence to retire early every single month. Every month I'm making progress. Some months are better than others, but I am making progress nonetheless. So I really enjoy watching everyone else's budget review videos. I hope y'all enjoy it too. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching this long ass video. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.